You have heard people quote confidence intervals most of your life, and you might just not have recognized what they were. So um, when you hear phrases like this, most babies take their steps, first steps between 9 and 12 months. They're giving you a confidence interval. They're, they've basically taken a sample and come up with a sample average age, the average age of their sample, and then they've expanded that. They've added something called a margin of error, and they've subtracted it, and they've got they've given you a, a low number and a high number. And they're saying the population, the population of all babies falls somewhere between these two numbers. Same thing here for a proportion or a percent. Um, they took a sample of Americans and found out how many of their, what percent of their sample was left-handed. And then they expanded that to say, well, the population of all Americans is somewhere between these two numbers. We don't know exactly what it is because we have not surveyed every single American. So you've got to estimate where the population falls. Um, quality control officers at manufacturing facilities rely on confidence intervals. So you may have your machine calibrated so that it produces coffee between 156.7 to 167.3 degrees. And a quality control officer will gather samples, get the mean of the sample, and then make sure by using a confidence interval that that output is still giving that range of coffee that they want. And if it goes outside that range, then they need to recalibrate. So what I'm going to do is explain to you um, the process. And once you've seen the process, you are then allowed to use technology to give you these confidence interval numbers. We have this concept of margin of error. And that's a value that gets computed. There's a formula that computes the error. But the definition of it I've got here, it basically tells you how far off your sample mean might be from the population mean. Again, you know from chapter one, if you did not survey everybody in a population, um, then, then your answer is not perfect. So you've got to make some estimates. So I might have gathered some data um, let's do the, the baby age. So let's say the sample mean, which remember the symbol for sample mean is X bar, might be uh, 10.2 months. So I surveyed a group of babies and I discovered that the sample mean was 10.2 months for when they took their first steps. And then if I was given a margin of error, which we use as E, of 1.2 months, that's telling me how far off my sample mean might be from the population. So the way you get your confidence interval is you start with your mean of 10.2 and your error is as much as 1.2. That means you might be 1.2 months too high or you might be 1.2 months too low. So subtracting 1.2 from 10.2 gives us exactly 9 months. And if I take 10.2 and I add 1.2 months, I get 11.4. So based on this sample mean and our margin of error, which we call just a big old giant E, the confidence interval for the population mean of all babies for when they take their first steps is somewhere between 9 months and 11.4 months. So that's how a confidence interval is calculated. Now there are formulas for finding E depending on how many are in your sample size and depending on whether it's a proportion. I'm going to show you what that is briefly, but you're again you're going to use um, technology to do that for you. So here I have two formulas for finding E, that margin of error, um, that I just want to show you so that you know what your technology is doing for you. There's a different formula if you have a large sample size than if you have a small sample size. Um, and by large, we mean if you're in, your sample size is at least 30, then they consider that large sample size. Um, the formula is using a special z-score that has to do with a particular confidence level. That means what percent of the population falls between the z-scores. And then that standard error of the mean you used in the central limit theorem. If it's a small sample, you use something called the t distribution in your error formula, that's what you would use, that's what your calculator is going to use if your sample size is less than 30. So now let's look at what it actually, what an actual problem looks like. This is a typical problem, so I'm going to um, suggest that you pause the video, read it, copy it down, and then uh, unpause it. So we want a confidence interval. You'll notice mention of a level of confidence, 95% confidence interval. There are generally three different levels of confidence that you will work with. There's a 
a 95% and a 99. The industry standard, if they don't standard, excuse me, if they don't specify, is 95%. Um, so generally speaking, they will they will create a 95% confidence interval unless it's specified otherwise. But this one is specified for us. That has to do with the ZC value that I mentioned in the last um, part of the video. So um, we've we've got our organization down. I know my sample size. How many people I surveyed, there were eight people, so n is eight. I also know that my sample mean was 35.5, so that's x bar. Sample mean is x bar. I know my sample standard deviation. Technically, I, could, I should use the symbol s because it is a sample standard deviation. Um, your, your calculator will do a capital S or is some, it will use that population standard deviation symbol also, so be ready for any of those. And in order to find the, the population mean, in your calculator, I'm going to describe how to do it and then I'm going to show you a little video of it. But you have that key again that says stat on it where your statistical functions are. That's what we used in chapter two when we did um, mean, median, standard deviation, things like that. So you hit your cat stat key, and then with the menu that comes up at the top all the way to the right, you see something called tests. And you're going to scroll over to tests. You're going to scan that list, and on the TI-83+, plus, it's down at number seven. It might be different in other ones. You'll see something that says Z interval. And then you'll see something underneath it if you use your arrows to scroll down to other options. Um, most of you at number eight, it says T interval. And move everybody up. Um, and then you'll see two sample Z int, two sample T and other things. But right now, we're interested in these two things right here. Okay. Now, you're going to have to make a decision on to which one you use. They're both intervals, and they will give you confidence intervals. But based on those formulas I showed you before, you need to know whether to choose Z or T, and it has to do with your sample size. I only have eight people in my sample. That is less than 30. So if you wrote the rule down from the previous um, part of the video, if you didn't, you need to go back and do that. But if you did, you'll notice that's less than 30. That's when the formula for the margin of error used the letter T, T critical value. So you're going to do a T interval here. So in your calculator, you would select T interval and hit enter. And your calculator is going to ask you information. So it's going to say, first of all, input. So it wants to know, are you giving me the list of numbers of all eight people and what their commute time is? That would be data. Or has somebody already calculated the mean and the standard deviation? For this problem, I already gave you the mean and the standard deviation. So I gave you stats. So you're going to highlight stats. Underneath it, it wants to know what's the sample mean. And so you, in this case, would type in 35.5 for x bar. And underneath that, you see that sample standard deviation symbol, the SX. Um, and in this case, it's 7.2, so we type in 7.2 for that. It wants to know our sample size of n, so we put in 8. And then it wants to know, it says C level, that's confidence level. So our problem gave us 95. This is important. You have to write that percent as a decimal. So it's 0.95. Make sure you put that as a decimal. If you get an error, that's likely why. All right. So you do those steps. Let me scoot up just whoa, so we have room for everything. So uh, what you get when you put all that in, it calculates the error for you. It add and adds and subtracts the error from that sample mean, and it comes up with a confidence interval of 29.481 to 41.519. So the population of commute travel times for the whole population, somewhere between those two numbers. So let me input how to do that on uh, the calculator. So you've seen and heard the explanation. I mean, you've seen it written down, but let me just show you a video. All right, I kind of have my video 
perch precariously, so I, I'm sorry if there's a lot of movement. Okay, so here's a visual of, of everything we just talked about. So I want to do a confidence interval. I hit my stat key. We go over here in this menu to test, so I got to do my arrow key over to tests. Now we see all these things called test. If we go all the way to the bottom, we start to see the interval options. So I scroll down until I see Z interval and T interval. In this case, we only had eight in our sample size. So that makes it a small sample. So we make sure to choose T interval. So I've got T interval highlighted and I hit enter. Again, data is what you would choose if you had all the commute times for all eight people and you were going to put all eight of those times in. We're not doing that in this problem. We have the statistics. We already have the mean and standard deviation. So highlight statistics and hit enter just so it holds and then go down. X bar is your sample mean. Our sample mean is 35.5. Notice I had some other numbers in there and I just typed right over them. If you make a mistake like I just did, just hit clear and retype it. 35.5 is our sample mean. S, X is sample standard deviation. If you're doing Z interval, it will have that population standard deviation symbol, that little O looking thing, but they both mean standard deviation. 7 point, oh shoot, I don't remember what it is. Well, hopefully it's 7.2. Uh, in our sample size, we had eight people. C level is your confidence level. Please make sure you enter that as a decimal. Uh, they were asking for a 95% confidence interval, so I do 0.95 my confidence level and then I tell it to calculate. Now it takes a little while thinking. See this little thing right here? Oh, it's gone. That means your calculator's thinking if you see that little black um, dotted line kind of thing. So there's my T interval 29.481 and 41.519 that you see right here in parentheses. Um, that's your confidence interval. That's the answer to the question and then it just spits out your uh, statistics there. So that's how to do it on the technology. One more example before we end this video. Um, go ahead and pause the video, copy this down, and unpause when you're ready to keep going. Okay, we want a 99% confidence interval for the population mean. Some facts I'm going to need uh, to get organized. So I took a, um, now be careful here, it says mean salary and then it says 45. Make sure you're reading carefully. The mean is not 45. 45 is how many people, that's the sample size. That's how many people, how many employees they surveyed. The mean salary for that sample was 32500 So I'm not going to put the dollar sign in there because I can't enter that in my calculator. It'll mess it up. So that's my uh, sample mean salary. My sample standard deviation was 3000 um, And I'm going to do the 99% confidence interval mean. So I'm going to do that on my calculator. All right, now I, I know to hit my stat key and go over to test so that I can pull up these intervals and I've got these intervals down below that I scroll down to. In this case, I had 45 people. That makes it a large sample. So I get to use Z interval this time and hit enter. So again, I have statistics because they gave me the mean and standard deviation. So I've highlighted stats. Uh, now listen, the order is separate. See that? I've got that little O thing. That's my sample standard deviation symbol. So I, it wants the standard deviation there, 3,000. My sample mean was 32,500. X bar is sample mean. N is how many were in your survey. We had 45. Again, we want, no, we wanted a 99% confidence interval. So I have to do 0.99. Hit calculate and enter. And that one didn't take much time at all. So it came right out. I'm sorry. I hope I, if I rewatch this and it's bad, I'll, re I'll recopy it. I'm afraid when I lift it up, it, the screen is out. Anyway, so I see right there that uh, 31,348 to 33,652. So the population mean, if they took all the entry level employees at that whole corporation, the population mean of their salary is somewhere between those two numbers. I just want to make one correction. In the video, um, I said that this little symbol right there is, is sample standard deviation. It's actually the symbol for population standard deviation. Um, we're just using our sample standard deviation to estimate that number. So I just, I just want to make that correction.